Well, uh, here's a good one for the yes or no treatment and for the uh, uh, five minute uh, format. <laughs> it's this. Uh, it's one of the impassioned views on both sides. It was, it was Oliver Cromwell, good for England. Well, he's been called names by both sides of the argument, a visionary inspired by God to bring much needed reform, or an ambitious, power grabbing, regicidal criminal on the other. In any case, his Commonwealth lasted 11 years from 1649 to 1660, but at the end of that time, his body was exhumed from Westminster Abbey, taken to Tyburn, executed, his head put on display. By the way, it was the head was eventually returned to his former college at Cambridge, I believe. <laughs> but in any case, he had dis he had descended into public ignorance. So what are, what are the arguments pro and con? First of all, let's look at those who say yes, he was good for England. Well, to begin with, he ended corrupt processes and procedures like the infamous uh, ship tax that was eventually imposed in all parts of England, even if they, they didn't have ships with which to defend the realm. Uh, he also the Star Chamber, which was a legal device to get around due process. It was a corrupt regime needing reform. And he ended the wars, both in England and with the continent, which Charles had embarked upon. Uh, he directly confronted the proto-Catholic views of Charles and those of his Catholic wife in France, Henrietta Maria. She is said to have gone to Mass each day and forced her children to accompany her. Uh, incidentally, the state of Maryland in the United States was uh, named after her. <laughs> uh, next, he uh, not only confronted Charles I personally, but the notion of the divine right of kings. And that said, the king answers only to God, not to the people, not to Parliament, not to the aristocracy. Can you imagine? Um, it's not too much of a surprise to learn that there was a great deal of opposition to that. And finally, he permanently ended the supreme power of the monarch and paved the way for the supremacy of Parliament. Calvin uh, Coolidge, the American president during the 1920s, famously viewed Cromwell as a statesman who, quote, dared to oppose the tyranny of kings. So he was a man against excessive regal power and corruption, always a popular idea of those days. Uh, he opposed Catholicism. Uh, he enjoyed much public support. Well, what about those now who would say no, he was not good for England? Well, most notably, uh, Cromwell was uh, uh, exceptionally brutal. He, he was virtually unstoppable in the field of battle, but he was sadistic in his uh, practice of just decimating the vanquished. Uh, he entered the town of Drogheda in County Louth in Ireland and massacred almost everybody there, and then he did the same thing in Wexford. Uh, he famously said, quote, I am persuaded that this is a righteous judgment of God upon these barbarous wretches. <laughs> Good heavens. Needless to say, the Irish and those of Irish sympathies have never forgotten this one and, and will condemn him forever. And although he presented himself as a man of the people, he eventually became, in effect, a king. And he tried to pass on his position to his son, thus restoring hereditary monarchy for himself. As Lord Protector, he was even addressed as Highness by his underlings. He was also intent upon defeating religious freedom and enforcing his Puritan law on everybody. His speeches were loaded with biblical references and his zeal for godly reform, and that in turn led to thuggish attacks on church art. I must say, every weekend as I every week as I show visitors around Canterbury Cathedral, I see destruction in windows and statues, mostly caused by Oliver Cromwell. Uh, public entertainment such as theater were curtailed and even closed for religious reasons. Uh, this one policy probably engendered more opposition than any other of his many reformist initiatives. So, what's my take on Oliver Cromwell? While challenging royal excess was constructive and, and long overdue, his uh, accomplishments were, I'm afraid, more than cancelled out by his hypocrisy and his genocidal violence. Uh, in my view, that was just unacceptable behavior. So he was a bad man, and that's not a difficult conclusion to come to. So <laughs> there you have it. That's my view. If you liked it, the usual thing, give me a like, a subscribe, comment notify
all of that. And we'll see you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.